So in today's video, we're going to be looking at five logical reasons why God doesn't really want you to get married to someone that is not of the same faith. So in as much as a lot of us will be always asking that question of, is it a sin? It's not so much about whether it is a sin as it is about what is the logical reason. And so we're going to go straight to these five points. So the first reason is this, because God commands it and his commandments are not grievous to us. The book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says that God knows the plans he has towards us. They are thoughts of good, not evil, to bring us to an expected end. So when God gives a command, it is because he's our creator and he's also our father. And he has been here right from time. He understands the fullest you know, extent of what man can do or not do. He understands the full picture. And so when he is giving us commands, it is because he has looked at everything and he has seen the way out. He has seen the only viable way. So that is just one reason. If we believe as Christians that God is all-knowing and he has a reason, a purpose for everything he does, then we can actually trust him that even though we might feel like we are missing out on something, we are actually not missing out because everything is not always the, the way they seem. And then the second reason is this. Beliefs are the foundations of our being. So when two people come together, the most important thing is not how they look or what they make each other feel. The most important thing is what they believe in. Because when feelings go away and when reality strikes, the truth is that each and every one of us is guided by certain principles. And that is why you might see someone that is born in one different one culture. He thinks and behaves differently. But if that same person was born in a different culture, he would think and behave differently. So in the same way, when we become saved, we become born again, we kind of step away from the worldly th way of doing things and we become kingdom citizens. And we have a different set of values, a different uh, set of instructions that drive us, right? And so someone that doesn't believe in God or doesn't believe in Jesus Christ has a different set of values. And this is not to say that every value out there is outrightly wrong. Some values by reason of conscience could actually be good. But at the end of it all, if that value is not anchored in Christ, and when there is a clash of core values, then that's a big problem. And that's why the Bible says that if the foundation is broken, what can the righteous do? So if the foundation of, on which you plan to build your home, maybe have children and do whatever it is you want to use the rest of your life to do, if that foundation is not united, if it's not in agreement, there is no guarantee that you will always live happily ever after. And this is not to say that if you're a Christian, you're not going to face problems. No. But the thing is, if you believe in the same thing, even if you come against challenges and misunderstandings and all that, that your united foundation will serve as the arbitrator and you can be able to move forward in whatever you want to do. And that's why the Bible also says that a house divided against itself cannot stand. So the third reason is because when you marry someone that doesn't have the same values and belief, they can actually turn your heart away from God. So the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 49 talks about this. When God discouraged Israel from getting married to people of other nations that lived around them. You know, there's a saying in the Bible that evil communication corrupts good manners. So when you begin to mingle with people that have different views, over time, you will either influence them to your side or they will or they will influence you to your, their side. And the truth is this, when it comes to the Christian life that we live, many of the choices we have to make are kind of really difficult because they, are, they go contrary to what we as fallen humans tend to go for ordinarily, right? So when you are swimming against the current, it's easier for you to be swept away the, by the current. And that is the same thing. So if you marry someone that has different viewpoints and you have to mingle with them every day, you love them and you're trying to defer to them, over time, you will end up, you know, turning away from your values and going for what they actually believe in. And King Solomon in the Bible is a good example of this. He was someone that was raised by a godly father who was King David. And he loved God so much that even when God met him in the beginning and asked him, you know, he did something that was so pleasing to God. God is like, I'm ready to bless you. What do you want? He didn't even ask for silver and gold and the good things of life. He asked for wisdom to be a good king. So you could see that his heart was sincere to, before God initially. But then by the time he ended up marrying 
300 wives and getting 700 concubines. Bible says that these women turned his heart away from God. So if such a person that could hear directly from God and was called the wisest man on earth was able to be derailed from the truth of God's word, how much more you and I, right? So that's another thing that you need to consider. Another example, real life example, not even to talk about King Solomon. You can ask women, like for example, my mom, she married my dad who wasn't really a believer in Jesus. He, he wasn't born again and uh, she was like, she was so much in love with him and she's like, you know what, I'm going to convert him. And many other women actually think like that. But the truth is like, <laughs> ask a lot of them. You will hardly see a situation whereby that woman was able to convert the man after getting married. The truth is, if you can't convert them when you are dating, there's no way you can convert them when you are married. Because by that time, what's, what's, what's the special thing? What's the big deal? You know, familiarity creeps in and everybody begins to slack. So that's another thing you need to consider. You do not want marriage to be the reason why you lose your relationship with God. And then the fourth reason is this. The Bible says that the heart of man is desperately wicked. You know, for those that say, okay, he's nice. He promises that he's not going to interfere with what I believe in. A lot of promises can be made when someone is excited for example let's say someone wants to borrow money they can make you any promise about how they are going to repay it but the same zeal with which they ask for that money is not the same zeal they're going to use and pay it back that is if they pay it back so in the same way if a man is looking for a woman or the other way around it is very like they can make all the promises in the world but then the question becomes when push comes to shove, are they really going to stick to their promises? And then when things like, okay, children begin to come into the equation, questions such as who to follow or what religious beliefs to teach these children will begin to crop up. And we know that those kind of struggles are really big issues that can end up breaking a family. So if a family is going to end up breaking up in the long run because of these same be belief issues, why actually step into that in the first place? Because at the end of it all, when such things begin to come up, the children are the ones that end up, you know, being affected by the misunderstandings that may crop up between their parents. So the fifth and final reason why God discourages marriage between Christians and those that don't have the same values is because when a wife gets married to her husband under Christian beliefs and values, a wife is supposed to like sub submit to her husband or defer to her husband when you know they can't reach agreement on certain issues right and if that be the case if you end up marrying someone that doesn't have the same values because of love and those butterflies in your stomach when the time comes you will have to defer if you've tried to negotiate and reach an agreement on certain issues that might have to do with your belief right you will have to defer to that person and then you are put in a situation where the question becomes, are you going to go against God or are you going to go against your husband? And the truth is that when I'm talking about such situations, I'm not talking about situations that are outrightly sinful and all whatnot. But sometimes there are things that come up where your conscience says, this is not exactly okay. It's not like it's bad, but I don't really want to do it. And in some other cases, such um, uh, spouses might end up being people that are really averse to God or you know morality and all that and in such situations it becomes a daily struggle of who are you going to submit to are you going to submit to the man so that there will be peace in the house meanwhile you're sinning against God or are you going to submit to God and say no to your husband and then it turns to endless battles in the home so that's another thing you need to consider we don't use what we are feeling to decide who we are going to marry. Because when the time comes, God expects the wife to submit to her husband when they can reach agreement. And so in summary, this is not to say that anybody that is not a Christian or doesn't label themselves as Christian is a bad person. That's not what this video is about. Not at all. The truth is that some people that don't really identify as Christians actually have sound moral values that are way better than those that you know, claim to be Christians, sad to say, that is just the truth. So we don't just look for somebody that is very, you know, dedicated in church, running around and knows how to quote scriptures and know how to, knows how to use church slangs and all that. So that's not how you know who a true Christian really is or how to identify who is a good fit for you when it comes to values. So you need to be looking for someone who actually has the fear of God and regard for fellow humans. 
someone whose ideologies align with godly principles okay because the truth is that many people who don't want anything to do with the kind of christianity we have today actually you know have quality morals i mean their conscience is still alive so for such people some of them struggle to accept the you know hypocrisy and double standards that is rampant in majority of christianity today and that's why we see someone like mahatma gandhi this is not to say okay he's perfect or whatever but he made a statement he said i like your christ i do not like your christians your christians are so unlike your christ so you see that some of these people when it comes to values that god loves like honesty justice equity fairness treating other human people like humans and st stuff like that those people you know have those kind of values so if someone is a christian but they they hate other humans they are praying against them to die just because they did something they don't like and they have unforgiving spirit and all those kind of things would you really say that that person has the value the right values right so at the end of it all what we should be looking out for are the values that these people really have to me whether they say i'm a christian or not someone like cornelius in the bible wasn't really a follower of the jewish religion but he was someone that was invested in alms giving he cared about people and god saw this quality in him and he was able to say you know what peter go and preach to this man because he needs to come into the kingdom so the truth is that there are some people out there who in fact believe it or not even though they don't align with Jesus, with Jesus because the Jesus we've sold to them is not really the Jesus of the Bible, but they actually have a deep connection with God and truth. And that is what we need to be looking out for. And so in line with that, you as an individual need to work on your relationship with God because when you have a close relationship with God, you are able to discern between someone that is merely religious and saying, I'm a Christian, and somebody that may be saying, I'm not a Christian, I don't believe in all that, but they actually fear god their conscience is alive and they are open to the truth and to god okay so that's it and uh, beyond that also if you are close to god your intuition and your discernment will just be top notch you'll be able to know in your spirit even if every voice around you is saying this person is not a christian you'll be able to know in your spirit if god says go ahead or don't go ahead and so that's it for today's video thank you for sticking with me to the end consider clicking the subscribe button so that you can receive notifications whenever i upload new videos and also let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section and i will see you in my next video bye